Aren't you folks handsome as all get out? I'm really happy to see you. I'm really happy that Chris is here. Uh, I'm Jason Gorfine, uh, UX manager here at Tableau, or there at Tableau. They're in Austin too, forget it, don't worry about it. Um, let me tell you as someone that manages designers and used to design more than they get to now, simplicity is hard. Um, it's really hard and usually you blow it, but Chris is gonna show you how to make it, make it really sing. Uh, if you know Viz Club, if you've gone to Tableau Public, uh, if you live in California, and now that weed is legal, uh, you can go to this Cannabis Viz. It'll be awesome. Uh, if you're not into that, that's cool too. He's got tons of Viz's. Go look him up. But uh, the less I talk, the more he does. So please welcome Chris. We live in a world that is unbounded by complexity. We try and put some rules around that complexity. We try and understand the universe around us. And we try and build out these complex models. But that's seductive. That complexity gets really seductive for us. So what I want to start my talk today with is a, a discussion about somebody who is seduced by complexity, this guy. Ptolemy. Ptolemy was an ancient Greek. He lived at a time of exploding learning about our world. The ancient Greeks were an amazing bunch of people. They took a stick and stuck it in the earth, and they used the shadow of that stick to measure how big the earth was in 100 AD. And they did that to a fraction of what we know it to be today. It was really, really close. I find that amazing. And so Ptolemy was this guy who lived at this time of enormous learning. He was trying to understand the world around him. And he was probably the Zen master of his day. He, he looked at the sky and he wanted to understand it. He looked at the stars and the planets and he wanted to understand it. So he, he took his kind of writing influence, and he started plotting exactly where every star and planet was in the night sky. And he mapped this out day after day, hour after hour, minute by minute, and built up this enormous wealth of data. Can you imagine doing that? Now, this guy was the Zen master of his day. So like all Zen masters, he decided that the universe moved around him. The universe just rotated around him. He built what was a geocentric model. So geocentric, what does that mean? Geo, geo is the Earth. OK, centric, center. Model, we all know what a model is. <laughs> so he put the Earth at the center of his model, and he built these five uh, planets around it rotating, and he built this moon and the sun rotating around that. And all was good with Ptolemy's model, except he had a problem with the data. The data told him, and they'd understood this for quite a long time, the data told him that actually planets don't move across our sky in this simple arc. What planets do is move across the sky, and they start down here, and they curve like this, and move across the sky with these epicycles. And he plotted these out. This is what it looks like. So Ptolemy had a problem in the data. So he needed, to, he needed to improve his model. And this is where he got a little bit seduced by the complexity. He decided to add these, uh, what we call epicycles, what he called epicycles. And rather than planets rotating around the Earth like this, he said they went, woo. And when that didn't explain the data enough, he decided to add some more woos. So that was great. He explained it. And this actually, you know, Roman civilization fell. The great library of Alexandria burned. We entered the Dark Ages. And this actually entered what we know, what became kind of common knowledge. This went from theory to fact. This went from kind of just a scientific fact to a, a religious fact. 
it made sense that God had put us at the center of the universe. It made sense that these things rotated around us. So fast forward to the 15th century, this guy, Nicholas Copernicus. Copernicus looked at this much more simply. He decided that Ptolemy's model was much too complex. He decided that he didn't want to be seduced by the complexity. So he revisited it and built what we call a heliocentric model. Heliocentric model. Let's start this. Helio, the sun. Centric, the center. So the sun's at the center. Model, well, we all know what a model is. <laughs> so we have these five planets, including the Earth, the moon going around the Earth, all going around the sun. And that makes much more sense when you look at Copernicus's model. Because when we look at the Earth and the way it rotates around the sun, we can see that against the backdrop of stars, as the Earth catches up those outer orbit planets, they move and they trace a path against the backdrop of stars that explains that retrograde motion that we see in the sky. This model made much more sense, and it was much simpler. But, as Jason said, simple is hard. Copernicus had to go against everything that the Roman Holy Church told him, the Pope laid down. He faced death. He was a heretic for saying this. Now, we don't face death, hopefully, today, but we're going to try and explain a little bit about this simplicity. We're going to try and move mountains, as Steve Jobs says. Let's see if we can put the focus back on simplicity rather than being seduced by complexity. So welcome. My name's Chris Love. I work for the Information Lab out of the UK. I'm a Tableau Zen master. Let's start by continuing this thread of the seduction of complexity and how it might relate to data visualization. If you're familiar with this chart, let me start by talking about Sankey diagrams. Sankey diagrams, I have a, a love-hate affair with these things. Um, Sankey diagrams were created by Captain Sankey. It was 1898 when he first built the first Sankey. And he, he was an engineer. He wanted to understand the energy moving around a system and where that went and how it was lost. And you can see he's looking at the flows, the thickness of the lines represents the flows through the boiler, how much goes through the steam pipe, how much is lost to the system, how much gets recycled. A really good way of understanding that flow. But Sankey diagrams were probably created much before that. This is a very famous uh, chart by Charles Minard. It was 1869 when he created this. And it shows Napoleon's ill-fated march on Russia. And what does this show? Well, this shows all the soldiers starting off. The thickness of the line shows how many started. And we see the, pro the progression of their march into the winter, over to the left to Moscow. And we see the dwindling numbers and the way they split off. And this really accurately describes how those soldiers flowed. So probably Menard was the creator of the Sankey diagram, not Captain Sankey, even though he took the name. But let's let him off that. So, Sankey diagrams. I picked up some work that uh, Jeff Schaefer and Olivia Catherine had done. And I, I looked at this and I, I wrote a blog on Sankey diagrams. And what I'm going to do is talk you through that. So, if we switch to the demo, let's start off looking at this, this blog. And if I start scrolling down here, you can see the steps that are involved in creating a Sankey diagram in Tableau. Now, what I want you to do is do a little experiment. I'm going to describe how we create a Sankey diagram in Tableau. And when it gets too complex, I want you to raise your hand and keep it there. And let's see how many people feel they either don't understand the concepts or couldn't build a Sankey diagram. OK, let's see how many people by virtue of their hands being down, could. So, duplicate, let's step one, duplicate the data. Now, to do, duplicate the data, you probably use custom SQL. Anyone out already? 
You maybe use Ultrex or something like that if you wanted. Um, keep your hands up, but densification using bins. Who understands data densification in Tableau? If you don't, put up your hand. This is a really complex subject. Um, you now need to build ranking functions, so running some window functions. Keep up your hand, sigmoid functions. Who understands sigmoid functions? We now need to do nested table calculations on about three calculations with advanced addressing and partitioning. Everyone still there? If not, put up your hand. We now need to build that through, tidy it up, add size. Oh, right, thanks guys. There were quite a few hands went up there. Um, it's a lot to ask you after day and night out to keep your hands up for that long, so thank you. Um, so the, the end result is this, this beautiful visualization in Tableau, but it's a lot of effort to create. Let me, while that loads, let me show you what one of my colleagues then went on and created. This is my colleague Pablo. Beautiful data visualization showing the internal migration of Spain by decade of birth. It's got how many? 11 Sankey diagrams on, diagrams on here. Um, what it shows is how people moved around Spain. So top left, we see people born before 1921. So these are quite old now, these people, and they, these are people born in Andalusia. So we see 67% of those people still live in Andalusia. And we see where the rest have moved out. There's quite a thick line here that says, 15% of people now live in Catalonia who were born in, um, in Andalusia in 19, before 1921. And we see that that line grows thicker, and we see the percentages of people who were born in Andalusia by each decade. And we see that by 2010, 98% of people who were born in Andalusia are still there, which makes sense because you know, they, these are young people who haven't moved around much. And Pablo has done a fantastic job. He's added this, uh, these comments down here that we can then add a lot of meaning to, to this visualization. But I started thinking, how long did Pablo spend on this? How long did Pablo spend going through all these steps and following that? And I wonder how much, perhaps, he understood about the data densification and everything as he was doing that. So I, I started thinking, is there an easier way to get to the same analytical value that we get out here, which, to be honest, is still quite hard to understand. How, is there an easier way in Tableau to build that out? Well, let's explore that now. I've actually got that data set. I've not duplicated it, I've not done anything, so I've got the raw data. Let's just have a conversation. I'm with uh, 500, I don't know, friends. Let's, let's have a conversation about the data and work out how we get on. So, the place of birth. Let's start by looking at the, their place of birth and look at the population. So we see the vast majority of people were born in Andalusia over this data set over time. A lot of people who now live in Spain were born in other countries. You've also got Catalonia, which is a large area in Spain where a lot of people lived. How does that break down by year? So we could break that down and maybe move the sum of the population down here, fit that to height. You maybe get something that looks like this, that shows that makeup of how people have built. Fairly, we see the baby boomer years where people were born. Each area follows a very similar pattern. Other countries down there showing a, a high value. But didn't Pablo's visualizations show percentages? So we could do that. We could show the percentages and see now across each place of birth, the percentages of each area that were born. And we, we start seeing that the percentage of people who were born in Madrid is going up versus other areas. Well, let's clear that and look at the other elements that the visualization showed. So the res where they're now living in 2015, we can drag that on and we can fit this to the entire view. We now start exploring, well, where people have started and where they end up, very much like Pablo's visualization. We could start looking at the percentages in the same way. So let's look at percent of total. Let's compute that just down the 
residents just here. And it starts to tell this story. It starts to tell this story because we see that places like Kyoto, older people down here have all moved away versus this younger generation who are all staying. It's very different somewhere like Madrid, where people are, stay, are staying in Madrid a lot longer into their life. And we start to see these patterns just leap out. We see that Matilla has gone down. A lot of people used to move to Andalusia. Older people moved there, the younger generation haven't. Now, versus this, I was just able to explain that through a conversation very, very simply. That's the power of Tableau. That's why we all use Tableau. So let me cut back and start talking about, back to the slides, and start talking about how else we can start to use Tableau to investigate this data. Could we have slides back, please? So, Pablo built this visualization. It was very complex for him to do. It was very complex for him to do. We've just shown that maybe Sankey diagrams aren't the best way of exploring that data in Tableau. We can, we can look at trends and patterns in a much easier way. And it wasn't just Pablo. As, when I published this blog, this started happening. I started seeing these things everywhere everywhere, clients, Tableau public. It's just coming out of the woodwork. Ah! <laughs> it, really, it really gets my goat that people were picking up this really complex tool, this really un kind of niche visualization, and grabbing it and using it. And is that the way we want to use Tableau? And it wasn't just Sankey diagrams. Alex Duke produced this wonderful looking sunburst diagram, really complex in Tableau. David Perez produced this Makeover Monday, this circular chart. It's very hard to get those state areas in a circle in Tableau. You need complex trigonometry. These circles that Jeff produced, these kind of bar charts that go round, really hard to do. They're really visual, and I can see why they were used, but they're really complex to do in Tableau. Neil produced this um, map of the Premier League, this bump chart that he put into a circle. I can't imagine how much effort that was to understand and do. Not even them, me. This is one of mine. This is looking at movie pixels. Um, I downloaded movie posters, looked at the pixels, looked at the coloration. I then turned it into this, used z-scores and nested table calculations and all sorts to put this in this diagram. Complexity is seductive. Everyone's doing it. So what, are they right to do that? Well, it depends. I'm not stood here saying simplicity is right. I'm not stood there saying every, people are wrong who are creating these complex visualizations. Because it depends, and it depends on so many levels. So let's separate out this conversation. We had a talk yesterday from Josh Milligan on serious versus fun. They're two ends of the spectrum, and he was advocating not one of them is right. The same with Matt Francis yesterday. Best practice myths. Best practice, not best practice. This is a continual spectrum. Beautiful versus functional. Stephen Few versus David McCandless. These aren't extremes that you choose one or the other of. This is a continuation. You pick the right one for the right task. Simple versus complex. We had a talk yesterday from Adam McCann and Chris Martini, and they talked about the complex. I feel, and the subject of my talk today, is to put some more kind of highlight on the simple side of data visualization. I'm a Tableau Zen master, but I want to focus on simplicity in data visualization. And so I asked on Twitter, I said, what, are, what is it that's seductive about this complexity? What are people learning from what they're doing with data visualization? And the answers that came back were interesting. So David said, it's good to learn with aimless personal work so we can improve 
and apply what we've learned at work. So learning. So Alex said, it's not best practice, but the radio chart gave me a better understanding of table, calcs, table calcs and partitioning. Adam said that I've built several and learned a lot. It's great to push boundaries. And I completely agree with that. But is that the only way to learn Tableau? Is that what learning Tableau is all about? Is that what we focus in on with Tableau? Table calcs and partitioning and complex calculations that do crazy things. Well, this is a very uh, new Tableau public author that's just come on the scene. He's had some Tableau public blogs. He's created over the last 40 weeks for Makeover Monday 40 data visualizations that describe very simply a lot of complex stories. And he does that just by focusing on the data, just by looking at the data and focusing on it and drawing out. And he's not used any complexity. He's not used any Sankey charts. The truth is that this is Joe Radburn. He's eight. He's the son of Rob Radburn, Tableau's M master. But Joe isn't seduced by complexity. He's not seduced by these complex charts. He picks up Tableau, and he uses the tool that he's got in front of him to just drag and drop and explore the data. And with some guidance from his dad, he builds out some really in interesting stories through Tableau. That's as much learning Tableau as learning complex table calcs to do complex things. And I, it makes me think about my path through Tableau. I started off where Joe is, you know, very start of my time in Tableau. I was keeping things very simple. And then my trajectory, I created more and more complex visualizations. And I think a lot of people look at this curve and think that the top of that hill is the peak of Tableau experience, that that's the point. That's where Tableau's M masters are. Tableau's M masters are all about complexity. This is where we need to get to. That's why the, all these crazy visualizations are produced, because people are wanting to prove that they've got there. But there's actually a valley on the other side where we come back to simplicity, where our experience starts telling us that actually people need simplicity. They need us to tell complex stories in simple ways. That's what Tableau is all about. So this got me thinking. And it got me thinking about the way we use Tableau and the conversation that I just had with you about data by dragging and dropping. The way that we sit in meeting rooms and ha drag and drop and build things out together. That's what Tableau is all about. And I have this great quote from Thomas Kuhn that is quite long. I'm going to read it to you. I think this, for me, this epitomizes the value of simplicity and the value of using Tableau to drive simplicity. So he says, the man who is striving to solve a problem defined by existing knowledge and technique. He's not, however, just looking around. He knows what he wants to achieve, and he designs his instruments and directs his thoughts accordingly. So what he's saying, the first bit is, if we just pick a Sankey diagram, we've directed our thoughts that we want to focus on flow. We've told ourselves what we're going to do. When we build a dashboard to focus on sales, we've told ourselves that these are the areas we want to focus on. And he goes on to say, unanticipated novelty, the new discovery can emerge only to the extent that his anticipations about nature and his instruments prove wrong. There is no other effective way in which discoveries might be generated. So the only way we can generate new discoveries is by throwing away those dashboards and throwing away those complex tools and not making assumptions about the way we want to visualize things and actually just playing, embracing Tableau and dragging and dropping exactly like I was doing in that demo. Because that's the way that we generate these discoveries by proving that the dashboards that we build and the complex visualizations that we build are wrong. That's where new discoveries are made. And Tableau was created simple for this. So why is Tableau created simple? Well, you just 
you, you, all you have to do is double click in the Superstore sales data. You double click on two related dimensions like category and subcategory, and they move onto the same rows. They build out a hierarchy for you. Do that with two unrelated dimensions, and they move into a crosstab. There's so much thought that's gone into that to create that simple interaction with this tool. The colors are all chosen so that they're simple to use, so we don't have to put much effort into improving them. Everything about this tool is created simple. And we're given these ways of telling simple stories. I've just talked about the data source. This is the most powerful way you can invoke discoveries in Tableau. Give it to someone, put it on your server, and let them find things out through themselves through web authoring. Let them generate their new discoveries that Thomas Kuhn was talking about. You can give them dashboards, let them become curiosity-led, tell them which areas they can explore, give them the room to explore, and that's what dashboards are all about. Or you can give them story points. You can give them story points and tell them what they need to know, and these are all really valid ways of producing some simple visualizations. But something's happening in, in the data visualization world, in the world around us, that's, that's moving us even more in a simpler direction. And that's these things. We're now having to design dashboards and design experiences with data visualization on mobiles. And mobiles aren't as forgiving as desktop devices. That Sankey diagram that Pablo produced wouldn't render very well. We wouldn't get the, the fine details that he wanted us to produce in our browser. So we have to focus on simplicity when we're designing for mobile. And I think that's really going to drive how much focus we get on simplicity in future. You only have to look at the, the IMVIS qualifiers for the mobile round. So Tableau did an, an IMVIS competition, uh, as we saw last night. And the qualifiers for that, there was a mobile round. And this is one of the winners. So this is Luke Stanker. And he produced, he, he won the round through the popular Twitter vote. And let's just look at this. There's some text. There's some line charts. There's some averages. Some really simple seven-day trends across different teams. There's nothing complex there. This is a really simple visualization that he's had to put together to tell that story really, really simply. And this won. The overall winner that the, the, the judges chose was Curtis Harris. Now, Curtis won I in Viz last night. He went on to win, again, with a very simple visualization. This visualization is just as simple. It's just some simple charts, some line charts, showing the story of this baseball story. The focus on mobile has to be all about simplicity. And I love the fact that it's driving this and building this through. And well done to Curtis for winning yesterday as well. I thought it was a fantastic visualization. So we're moving the focus on to simple design. So let's change the pace. Let, we've talked about the complexity of the process. We've talked about charts like Sankey diagrams. We've talked about the, the complexities that they add in terms of building out those things. Let's talk about design. And let's talk about the elements that we can add to our visualizations that keep them simple. This is a visualization that featured in The Guardian. It's about gay rights by state in the US, and it, you can see it's this sunburst chart. Complexity has been added to add engagement, and it's beautiful. But does beautiful, once it's drawn us in, does it help us to add any understanding? Well, if I want to look at the, the rights in Texas, for example, what do I need to do? Well, first of all, I need to find Texas, and it's in the southeast, so OK, there it is. We can see that dot just there. Then I need to scan in and find the elements. So the lighter colors are the limited rights. The darker colors are, are the maximum rights that, we can, that these states offer. So we need to find where those are. And we need to look up here. And we need to look up here. 
Now we've found those, we need to go back to the legend and find those in the legend and find what rights they are. But, oh, the, there's a pink and there's a purple that are very close, and the light blue and the dark blue are very close, so we need to go back and compare those to their neighbors to find which blue it is. Then we need to come back and we work out that actually Texas has got limited in adoption and hate crimes. And if we want to compare that to Kentucky, then we need to do the same for Kentucky, and we need to find those three elements, then we need to come back. And we've only compared two states, but that was a lot of effort. The designer has sacrificed a lot with the complexity that is added to that visualization. Sacrificed a lot of understanding for the audience. And although you're drawn in, you don't spend time to understand the actual message that is in there. You sacrifice when you make uh, data visualizations and when you design them for complexity and engagement uh, over and above simplicity. So this is a simple dashboard, isn't it? This is one by Kelly Martin, another Zen master. Kelly has produced this dashboard to look at deer strikes on runways. We select a species and we can see the chance of damage and we can see the flight path and the location by species. I started off by saying this is a simple dashboard. This is actually a dashboard that most, that most of you will be familiar with. The design is very much out the box. It's something that you put together, you throw three or four panes on a Tableau dashboard and you, you use that to direct your audience and, and help them work through the visualization. But actually, these visualizations suffer from a very big element of confusion. Where is my eye drawn to? Where should I be looking on that visualization to start with? Well, maybe I should be starting top left, but what's the overall story? Where should, I, where should I go? What should I do? It's a very complex visualization to understand. So Kelly rebuilt this, and she put the focus on one large chart. She put the focus on one large scatter plot with some splats. Now, your first reaction might be to look at that and say, oh, wow, that's complex. I couldn't do that. But actually, there is no element in there that is complex in Tableau. It's a scatter plot. You've got the altitude going up the top, the distance, the speed of the airplane across the bottom. She's used some shapes to change the mark types for some engagement. And she's added a map filter for you to filter and some overall numbers up at the top. A really simple visualization that focuses on simple design elements to help tell us what to do. This wouldn't take long to create in, in Tableau. It takes a lot of time to think about the design of that visualization and get it right. But I, I'd say that this is simpler to understand than the first one because of its simplicity in its design. Don't add complexity for complexity's sake. This is a, a, a visualization from so, slow journalism. It's actually showing something very, very simple. It's showing books and their genre, something that we could probably get from a list, but it, it's trying to engage us, the lines show which colors. It's really hard to even check this as a designer, to check you've got the data right. There's a lot of levels in this data visualization that aren't needed. It's just abstracting complexity for complexity's sake. This guy does the opposite. That was a simple idea that was taken and shown very complexly. I had the pleasure of seeing Professor Hans Rosling two years ago at a talk at a Tableau conference. And Professor Rosling used toilet rolls to describe the world changes in population. These very complex ideas. He could have used anything to explain it. He could have given any kind of lecture. He could have used any amount of complex metaphors. He chose toilet rolls to get his message across. He took a complex idea and distilled it into simple elements. And that, I imagine that's a lot harder to do. But don't go too simple. You can... <laughs> this is actually an old slide. I, 
I don't know. I need to update it. If anyone could tell me any recent events that were probably too simple a choice, then just let me know afterwards. Um, back to visualization. Um, visualizations. This is um, uh, one from the Wall Street Journal. It's an amazingly simple visualization. This could have been done as a line chart. Best practice would probably say, let's do this as a line chart. But the designer chose to just show it in this very simple way. So he's moved away from best practice. It shows measles. It shows all the states. And the red hot spots are where there are more cases of measles, more epidemics. And it shows very clearly that when the vaccine was introduced, those cases went away. It tells a really effective story through a very simple medium, very, very simply. It's engaging. It brings you in, and it tells the story very well. We don't need complexity to tell that story anymore. Complexity has its place, though. This is a visualization by Russell Spangler, created for Invis again. Competitions are where, exactly where you should be doing complex visualizations. If Russell was doing this to tell more of an analytical story, maybe at work, or, or with a different focus, he'd have perhaps chosen this route, something where you could compare calories and compare nutrients. Again, coming back to that idea that it depends on the context of where you're, what you're showing and what you're trying to do. If you're trying to win a competition, there is no problem with going for complexity. No problem with that at all. If you're trying to show analytical value and you want to create something to maintain and update and check, maybe something simpler is what you want to use. I had to show this. This is an absolutely fantastic visualization by Michael Mixon. Uh, it, it shows trick-or-treating at Jeff Schaefer's house. Jeff's the Tableau Zen master, and he put the data, the data to show the Halloween visits to his house and invited people to, uh, to visualize it. <laughs> what a fantastic metaphor. Just an area chart and the design and the, the elements in this are fantastic. Just this ghost metaphor just leaps out at you. And it's really engaging. But it's simple. This is just an area chart. It's no, sim no more difficult than that. It's an area chart and a picture. But what better way to get across that story? So simple thinking. We need to start thinking a lot more simply. But how do we get there? Well, we need leaders. How many of you cast yourself as a Tableau champion back at your workplace? How many of you go and give that simple Tableau message? Well, lots of hands raised there. You're all doing this. You're all going back to your workplaces. I challenge you to go back and give a simple message back to your colleagues. Reward simplicity as much as you do complexity. When you see complex viz or simple viz on Tableau Public or viz of the day, reward those and view them in the same light for the reasons that I've been stating already. Because if we don't, people start becoming intimidated. This was a conversation through Makeover Monday. Makeover Monday is uh, every Monday, uh, Andy Kriebel and Andy Cotgreave put out a new data set. You've probably heard a lot about it this week. Um, they put out a new data set, and they invite people to visualize data. And about week 30, they noticed there were a lot of downloads of the data, but no one was submitting their visas back into the process. So they asked, why? What's going on? Why is no one submitting their visualizations? And Nilbot gave an explanation. He said, it's turned into a graphic design competition rather than quick data viz. These must take hours. Pam said exactly the same thing. I've noticed so many posts early on were about cool graphics. People were becoming intimidated by complexity. I think we have a role as role models, as Tableau champions, to set what we use Tableau for, to use it as much for simple things as we do complex things. Get the balance right. So to summarize, we need to do simple things first. Concentrate on the simple, getting simple right first. Tableau was created 
simple for a reason. That's no accident. It's a simple tool. But remember, simple is hard. You're actually stretching yourself more when you aim for simplicity than you are when you choose a complex data visualization type and just go for that. Use simplicity to aid understanding. It doesn't have to be boring. You know, we've seen ghosts. We've seen all sorts of things. It doesn't have to be boring, and it can be engaging. If you really want to think about designing simple first and go mobile first, design for a mobile device first, think about your mobile users, and that will force you to think simply. It's all about taking simple visualizations to convey complex ideas, not showing complex visualizations to show simple ideas. And we need re leaders to reward simplicity. I think I'm going to take questions afterwards by the side, so please come and chat to me. Uh, I think we've, we've got a little bit of time. Have, have we got some mics we could do questions live? If we've got some mics, then I'm happy to take some questions or have anyone argue with the, with the fact. Anyone want to argue with me? <laughs> Someone want to make the case for Sankey diagrams? OK. We've got a question down here. Just. Yeah, for Sankey diagram, it was the best graph I found to uh, illustrate the movement between one department to the other, you know, HR movement. Uh -huh. What equivalent you would suggest to, to show that? To show the movement between two departments? Yeah. I think something like a... Like over three years, something clear. Um, you could use a, a cross tab, so show one department versus the other, and show just a simple heat map that shows the, the numbers moving from one to the other with a kind of the heat showing the amount. That would be really quick and simple to put together. Um, you could show trends in the same way that I did that simple visualization of Pablo's. Yeah, oh, yesterday, the, the heat map with the bars on the side and the bars on the yes, side. Yes, that's right, yeah. It's like a, maybe good. Any other questions? We've got one over there. Sorry, I'm making you run. You should make Jason do this. Um, hi. Uh, I, I've seen some software in uh, Skunk Works lately. I'm an analyst, um, so I'm supposed to look at these things. Um, <clears throat> and I've seen some natural language uh, effects that are being developed to explain in natural language what people are looking at in visualizations. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, this struck me as almost funny because the whole idea was we use visualizations to make uh, you know, grids of data more understandable, but now we want natural language processing to make the visualizations more understandable. Do you think, I'm gonna seed your answer, do you think this is as crazy as I do? So using text to describe what people are seeing? Spoken. Spoken text. I think our eyes, have, our brains and eyes have developed to, to process visual information much more quickly than we have spoken information. If you go back to our ancestors and see why our visual cortex has developed the way they did, why we see certain colors over others, it's all because our visual cortex has developed for that reason. I think totally crazy to think that you could insert some text and get the same level of understanding that you could through your visual cortex. So I'm with you on that one. Any more questions? Come and speak to me afterwards if you do. I'd just like to finish off just by saying you have an opportunity. You, I want to remind yourself that Tableau is a simple tool you can either choose to be Ptolemy and convey complex ideas with complex models, or you can choose to be Copernicus. If you want to be an ancient Greek and prove lots of learning and be at a time of great understanding, then be a stick. Take that stick and use it to measure the radius of the Earth. Tableau is your stick. I'd like to finish just by saying that complexity will certainly get you attention. 
Simplicity will get you respect. Gobi Sticks, people, thank you.